I'm more than happy to listen to the cries of judicial activism, but we can no longer sit here and just pick when we like it and when we don't because it fits the politics of our time or the narrative that we're interested in. It's a pleasure to be here at this lovely filler hearing. Um, it, it, it's not gone, I don't think, exactly as my colleagues thought it would go. You know, I, I, sometimes when I sit here, I often think to myself, who's in the room when these things get planned out? And like how, let's decide who we're gonna call. Uh, like, I don't know, let me find some sympathetic people to bring to this hearing today. Let me find a giant bankrupt corporation. Let me find an oil guy to talk about the Gulf of Mexico 12 times and how our national parks are getting better because of the Gulf of Mexico. Not really during the BP oil spill, but we won't go into that. Um, I, I mean, we talk about judicial activism. I mean, I, I just, I often think to myself, like, what was it not judicial activism when we had a judge meet with US senators and say privately that Roe v. Wade was precedent on precedent, and then go in front of the Senate under oath and say the same thing, and then in their very first time, right, take back a law that had been there for 50 years. That's, that's not judi ju judicial activism. And, and by the way, it would be an anomaly, except it didn't happen once, it happened twice. Two judges appointed by Donald Trump that went and met with senators and said Roe v. Wade was precedent on precedent, and then went in front of the Senate under oath and said the same thing, and then get on the court. And in their very first couple of years, what do they do? They get rid of a law that had been there for 50 years. And so listen, I'm more than happy to listen to the cries of judicial activism, but we can no longer sit here and just pick when we like it and when we don't because it fits the politics of our time or the narrative that we're interested in. We, we sit here and we hear about, you know, transparency. We want judicial transparency. I, I mean, it, it's almost like when this hearing was decided, maybe it was so long ago now that it wasn't in the news. I mean, boy, judicial transparency is really timely. So yes, thank you for bringing that forward about transparency in the legal system. I'm not sure that the American people are wondering about third party litigation funding, but they're definitely worried about transparency with the highest court in the land where there is no remedy when you have ethical violations other than impeaching a judge in the Senate. Um, and, and so listen, we should do a whole hearing on, on judicial transparency, because I think, I think it's timely. I think the American people want, want to hear about it. You know. Um, I, it's just fascinating to me as, as we continue to sit in these hearings in oversight. I mean, we've had nine months of hearings on a very specific topic. Those have gone so well, we're now re gonna, we're gonna rebrand those hearings and hit the video game reset button, start all over again, right? I, I mean, it just, it's, it's just interesting. We sit here, we hear our colleagues bring up certain things like, oh, the the Biden family took money from a foreign entity, right? And it's just like, well, really? I mean, do, do, they, do they really not know that Jared Kushner took $2 billion from the Saudis? I mean, by the way, they go on Twitter and blame the Saudis for 9-11. But then Jared Kushner, who, by the way, was not a wealth expert before he worked in the White House, nor was he a Middle East expert, before he worked there, gets $2 billion from the Saudis, and they don't, they don't have any questions. And, and I just think that the American people recognize that they have no credibility. It's why the stuff they've been selling in this committee for nine months has not translated, which is why they got to start it all over again. Uh, it, it just, you, you don't have any credibility when you only want to look at, at one side of the coin, right? And so, listen, I, I, I appreciate the time, Madam Chairman, uh, Chairwoman, uh, but I, I just feel like I'm not going to beat up on you guys anymore. I, I, I think that it's been quite obvious that the way this, this hearing has gone. And so I want to thank all the witnesses for, for coming today. It's probably not what you, you bargained for or what they told you this would be like, but uh, I appreciate you all for coming, and that I yield back.